Hello and welcome to uh, this presentation of an overview of Ada GUI, an Ada-oriented GUI written entirely in Ada. Here are my details, and for those of you who like to just jump right in, here's the GitHub repo. And if you wish to contact me, you can do so through GitHub. We'll start by discussing the traditional GUI framework how it came to be, why it's not optimal, and why an ADA-oriented GUI should be different. With a traditional GUI framework, you follow this standard way to create a program of creating widgets, register callbacks, and then giving up your thread of control. Why is this? Well, as you might know, a, uh, the user of a GUI runs on a completely different computer than the GUI program. And so there's uh, inherent parallelism there. The GUI has to be able to respond to the user actions and needs a thread of control to do that. In the sequential languages that uh, were originally used to create GUIs, there's only one thread of control. So the GUI must get its thread of control from the program. But then how do you respond to events with user code? And the uh, solution that they came up with was to register callbacks. One consequence of this is that programs are uh, not written the way normal programs are and are difficult to uh, understand and it's unintuitive to design and write them in that way. So for an example, let's look here at a traditional program that does not use a GUI. And uh, it's quite straightforward. I'm sure you all can read this and figure out what it does. Part of the uh, thing is that we start at the top and we go down, and it makes perfect sense. And in fact, you can compile this and run it, and it does exactly what you would expect it to do. Now let's look at one with a GUI. And we will call this GUI uh, TGF for Traditional GUI Framework. And you notice that we declare a bunch of procedures we, and some, some GUI objects. And then the main program is very simple. We call the GUI to set up, create things. And then we call this main loop program, and then we're done. But what does the program do? That's obviously not clear. You have to understand that this thing, when you call main loop, is going to then collect GUI events and call the appropriate callbacks when events happen. Um, so this goes contrary to the uh, way that people normally learn to read and write programs in the first place. But it goes uh, further than that. Whereas with a program like this, you can say the program does X, and then it does Y, and then it does Z. With a GUI program, you have to think, when the user does this, then the program will do X. When the user does that, then the program will do Y. And when the program does this other, then the program will do Z. And any of these callbacks can change the internal state of the program, and they can change the state of the GUI. And the number of combinations of this, even in a fairly moderate program, can quickly become very difficult to uh, hold in one's mind. So that is why I say that it is uh, a good idea to have a more traditional approach to programming with a GUI than that offered by the traditional GUI framework. So what are the consequences of designing a GUI with a concurrent language in mind? Well, the first uh, thing that comes to mind is that the program does not have to give up its set of control because the GUI can have its own task. And uh, the program doesn't have to register callbacks because it can call its own code and execute its own code 
whenever it chooses. The GUI doesn't have to do it for it. And uh, the other is that this then allows you to preserve in a traditional way of writing and understanding programs. And actually the GUI has to communicate its events to the program and the obvious way to do that is for it to put the events on a protected queue. And the program can take events from the queue when appropriate. And this uh, can be an important consideration because sometimes the response to an event can take a long time. And what happens when that happens? If it's a callback in a sequential language, then during the time that that callback is executing, the GUI has no thread of control and cannot be responding to events. Um, in other cases, such as Gnoga, which looks like a traditional GUI framework, but behind the scene uses internal tasks. There's a new task for every event. And so during the execution of the callback for one event, another event can occur, and the callback for that event can execute at the same time. And this can call, cause con corruption of the uh, internal state of the program. And uh, requires extra effort to get right. Um, for an example of this, if you look at the Ganoga version of Mind Detector, again in my GitHub repos, you'll see that I have had to take steps to ensure that events are handled in the proper order, because in some cases the events can take long enough to process that the user can create another event during that processing. So the uh, GUI should then provide operations to create widgets and return an ID of the created widget. And then when you want to update or modify a widget, you use its ID passed to the operation. And since the ID is the same for all widgets, not the ID value, but the ID type. The operations can only operate on widgets of the appropriate kinds. And so Ada GUI makes heavy use of preconditions to ensure that operations only get widgets of the appropriate kind. And events contain the ID of the widget so that operating on the widget becomes fairly straightforward. And what does this look like? At least as I have done it, we have the, the widget ID type. We have the functions that create widgets and return a widget ID. We've got the events with an ID of the widget in it and the protected queue to obtain one. And then we have operations that operate on widgets. often with preconditions for the kind of widget that they apply to. And so then the next thing, of course, is to look at this in practice. So let us look at some examples of using Ada GUI. First is a LUN checksum generator, which is very simple. A one checksum is the checksum digit used at the end of uh, bank card numbers, such as credit cards and debit cards. If you have such a card in your possession, you put the first, all of the uh, digits except the last into uh, the checksum generator, it will generate your uh, last digit for you. 
if we look at this, we notice first thing that we uh, declare everything the same. This is a little different from uh, when using a, a GUI with callbacks. There's this generate procedure which takes the input and generates the rec resulting uh, checksum. And while it's interesting, it's really irrelevant to our uh, our interests here. So we set up the GUI here, new text box, new background, etc. And then we go into an event loop. We go into a loop where we get an event and respond to it. Exiting when the window is closed. If it's a left click, if it's the gen button, we say call generate to generate the checksum. And if it's quit, we exit. And when we exit, we end the GUI. Quite simple and straightforward. And we can see it in all its exciting action. There we go. So you can see that it runs in the browser. And you're supposed to enter some digits. If you enter typical digits from a bank card, which come in groups of four, and there are four groups of four, you leave off the last digit. I'm reasonably confident that this is not a valid card number. You click generate, it says, well, that should be a seven on the end. If, on the other hand, you don't enter anything, you get this error message saying, enter some digits. And it doesn't matter what you enter. It will generate, if there's digits, it will generate a checksum from you. So that's very exciting. And then the second generate uh, example that I'm presenting here is a music player with the very original name MP, which stands for music player, or maybe military police, depending on how you like your music. And if we take a look at it, we'll see that again we set up the, the GUI. And then we have here something which is a logic that's a little more complicated to implement using callbacks. Basically, we need to have a song to play before we go into the playing of songs where we wait until the user has added a song, or if we start up after songs have been added, this will already be true. Or the user closes the window or quits. And then once the user has added a song, we go into playing the songs in the song list, or adding new songs, or deleting existing songs, etc., etc. And in fact, there is a Gnoga version of MP, which you can find on my GitHub account. And it's, in order to handle this logic, it's somewhat more complicated than this. And we can try out this as well. So here again, it's running in the browser. Okay. And currently there are no songs. So I hit delete, it ignores it. If I hit play or skip, it ignores it. I say browse, it brings up this file browser. Right in here, here it is. I have this song file. If I say OK, and add, and it 
it comes up and it begins to play this music file. So those are a couple of examples. Um, one other example that may be of interest that comes with it is called Show All. And it shows you one of each kind of thing that you can do. You see here that background text can have attributes. So we've got have in green, AT in bold, TRI in italics, and buttes is underlined. And we've added the euro statement there. The visible checkbox controls whether or not that's visible. And the rest of these don't really do anything. Well, you can select a file, and it tells you which file you selected. So, those are some examples of Adagui in action. Now I'll talk a little bit about the implementation of Ada GUI. It's derived from Gnoga, which is uh, why it uses the browser as the platform. But a lot of the stuff in Gnoga is not needed in Ada GUI and it's been removed. And then there's a little bit of stuff that is not exist in Gnoga that is needed in Ada Gnoga. GUI and has been added. Also, I uh, reorganized the uh, packaging in Ganoga to make it uh, more straightforward. As I said, with using the browser, the Ada GUI and Ganoga are both extremely portable. Uh, basically, any platform that's targeted by Gnat and has a browser, you can write an Ada GUI program and run it on that. Without change, you can run it on any other program, uh, platform that has such a combination of tools. So I'm not going to get into any detail on this. Those who are interested can look at the source on GitHub. So finally, uh, where have we been? Ada GUI has all these good things, unlike any other GUI that you might want to use. Well, that might be a, an exaggeration, but I like it, and I hope you do too. Thank you. And we are live again for questions and answers for Jeffrey. We have a first question already. Is the Ada GUI the continuation of Gnoga or an improvement to it? Or may, is it maybe a new approach? So Jeffrey, what is it? Well, the Ada GUI is a general concept for desktop GUIs that don't use uh, callbacks in the way the traditional GUI does. The current implementation that I have is derived from Ganoga, mainly because it exists and uh, is quite portable because it uses the browser as the platform. But uh, other implementations could certainly be made that used uh, native uh, capabilities of the platform being targeted. This, uh, you already touched on the subject of the, on the second question, which was what technology does Ada GUI use? So if I understand correctly, it uses Gnoga, which itself uses HTML and CSS and probably some JavaScript in the browser. Is that right? It's derived from Gnoga and for the connection to the browser is unchanged from Gnoga. So it's HTML5 and um, under the covers, it basically is issuing 
JavaScript uh, commands that update the the display on the on the browser or retrieve things from the browser. Right, and the uh, Ada program that runs runs on the server, right? Uh, from that point of view, yes. Ada GUI is intended for desktop applications, but uh, as opposed to say Gnoga, which a large part of it is dedicated to running web applications that would run on a server and accept connections from numerous browsers over the web. Uh, but the the way it's it's done now, it has a certain client server aspect to it simply because it's using the browser as the platform. Does that mean that the browser uh, runs as a, um, an extension to the application, to the desktop application, or is it really a client server model with a server and browser running on different machines possibly? Well, the idea is that a GUI is a a way to do a GUI for a desktop application. And this implementation derived from Gnoga has under the covers a client server architecture to the to the browser which acts as a client. Right, then this uh, really touches also on the third question. Could Ada GUI be used for a server side rendering and then dispatch it to a client? Well, again, the the implementation is is uh, not fixed, but uh, presumably, if you have a way for your program to connect to some separate client running a browser, that it could be used that way. Right, and then the biggest question of all, I think. <clears throat> It might require a very extensive answer is how does this GUI compare to GTK Ada? Well, GTK Ada is a binding to GTK, which is in C, whereas Ada GUI is entirely in Ada. And uh, GTK Ada is a traditional uh, GUI where you register callbacks and uh, and this has the, the uh, effects that I noted in the talk that the Ada GUI is attempting to avoid. And uh, <clears throat> I guess that's about it. Uh, well, also, you could, uh, you know, perhaps implement, implement Ada GUI on top of GTK Ada. I don't know if that would be a good thing, but it could probably be done. And if you would implement Ada GUI on top of GTK, then you would no longer have this client server model, no longer a browser. That's right. Yes. But it's it feasible. wouldn't run on the browser. It is feasible. Um, the original implementation of Ada GUI, just for a proof of concept so that I could see that the concepts were usable, was on top of full Gnoga. And uh, then I revised that to derive the implementation from Ganoga. And, uh, but it could certainly be built on top of GTK Ada in a way similar to the way it was built on top of full Ganoga. Right. But I, I remember that GTK and GTK Ada have their own event loops that they are entirely built on top of the callback model. How would yes. that work? If if you would implement Ada GUI on top of that, how would you do it? Well, the way I did it with Ganoga was to uh, implement some very general callbacks and then register those callbacks for all the widgets that are created. You have internally a, a selection of a collection of of widgets that the user has created and you connect these callbacks to them. And, and then when you 
get the call back. Basically, it identifies the widget and creates a, an event to put on the event queue for the user program to, to take. And, and the implementation has its own task, which calls the event loop of the underlying uh, GUI. Right. Uh, Fernando asks, can we use custom SVGs, maybe make them dynamic? Custom what? SVGs, uh, simple vector graphics. These are images that can be rendered in any browser. So I would suppose they can be one of the various widgets uh, available in the Ada GUI for decorations uh, or for animations even. OK, um, currently Ada GUI has a, a graphic area widget where you can draw things. And it's not currently have anything to load specific images. Although that's something that I'm thinking of how to implement. Um, so, you know, if you want to write code to convert your SVG to draw in a, a drawing area, then you can do that. Uh, yeah, currently, they would be not that yeah, It would not be difficult, but it would probably be slow. Yeah, well, the, the point of SVGs is, uh, is that uh, browsers can render them directly uh, without converting to bitmaps. So mm -hmm. um, a, a, a widget that exploits this, this browser's ability to show SVG, I think it would be fairly simple to implement. Probably it would. Um, but in the interest of, of not constraining the implementation, it, would not fit if you were to implement Ada GUI on, uh, in some other way. Okay, we have only one and a half minute for the next two questions, so make it quick. Mm -hmm. uh, first question Is or will your approach be used in aviation industry? <laughs> I have no idea. Certainly, probably talking to the to a browser. Uh, it's, it's not going to, to be a, a good idea for aviation, but uh, a different implementation could presumably be used. And the last question, uh, how hard would it be to enrich the semantics and have more user events like hover and more control like SVG mixed with text? Well, uh, there are a lot of things that Kinoga provides that Ada GUI doesn't provide. And, and implementing them is, is fairly straightforward. Um, of course, if you wanted to uh, do them in another GUI uh, fashion, then using the, the browser, I'm not sure what would be involved for that. I'm trying to keep it. Uh, GUI fairly uh, generic and applicable to multiple platforms. Thank you. So, 